really women participate in every single aspect of the war, especially from this period, a starting point going all the way to 1965, when for some political reason, they start to be asked to stay behind, but it's not gonna last long because many of them will refuse to stay behind and continue fighting. The most well-known in that case is Tichina Sila, right? But later on by the 1970s, the PAIJC leadership will recall all the women in the fight because they wanted to end the war. The uh, leadership wanted to end the war very quickly. You see, that's kind of like all what happened and all that. Yes, they were in every, they, these women were in every single aspect of the struggle. Thank you very much for that, uh, Dr. Liu. Uh, this is very important. These stories are very, very important. And we need to uh, let the world know what has, what has been going on. Um, because in, in most cases, you will look at uh, what has been happening in Africa that see if the people never resisted. Even if we were to take up the pages of history on slavery, we will see, understand that there have been fight, there have been resistance. It wasn't like uh, the people were just there, hey, put a chain on my hand and take me to, to slavery. It was, it was never like that. It's just that we are waiting for other people to tell the story and it's going to hurt us for a very, very long time. Uh, now, uh, you as a, as a researcher, as a professor in this, uh, in this particular field, you have talked to some of these women who have uh, been direct uh, fighter. Now, you tell me personally, when you talk to them, what do you feel? Like they tell you their own story. What do you feel? Uh, share that with me. First, what do you feel is like you are proud. And like you said, even myself, when I start researching on Guinea-Bissau, the first goal was to go talk, discuss, and learn more about Amitkal Cabral and the national liberation struggle. You see, because as a young, a young from Senegal, we always heard about Cabral and the national struggle in Guinea-Bissau. You see, now what made me even became interested in talking to these women were something happened when I was in Guinea-Bissau in 2008 during the summer of 2008, as I was in the PIJC headquarters. And at the time, PIJC was the ruling party and they were getting ready for their parliamentary elections, right? I was in a major uh, kind of like seminar room, a large seminar room full of people. And suddenly a lady entered the room. And as soon this like old lady, who seemed to be very charismatic, entered the room. Everybody stand up and people kind of like lined up to shake her hand one by one. As new also, and I never, I don't know who is she. I was with one, uh, Julia Omane, who was at that time my kind of like research assistant and, uh, uh, and Ramalo Mbalo, uh, Ramalo, Kamara, wait. Ramalo Sisoko, right? Ramalo Sisoko, who was one of these fighters during the National Liberation War. And as they stand, I stand with them and we all shake the hand of the lady. And when I come, Ramalo uh, Sisoko said to me, this is Tia Carmen. I say hi to her, came and I was puzzled. How come this room where you have ministers and even like the prime minister at that time, uh, or like the, the leader of the PAIJC at that time, uh, Carlos Gomez Jr. was there. Everybody stand up and shake this lady's hand. I keep asking, who is this lady? And they said, Tia Carmen. And after that, I say, who is she? They said, she was one of the toughest fighters during the National Liberation War. And now think about it. I have been conducting a lot of readings for over a period of two years before I go to Bissau to have a better understanding of the National Liberation War. And what I realized in most of the scholarship work, when people talk about these women, they talk about them in a very indirect way. And that's what triggered my kind of like curiosity. And I keep asking to, the people who I were with, they said, you know what? You have so many women here who are still alive who participated in this fight. And that's when I started saying like, you know what? I need to meet these women. And I was lucky enough 
through the uh, PHSL uh, leadership to be introduced to somebody like Bakar Gassama, who was one of the earliest people Cabral was able to convince to join the fight in 1954. I was able to meet Carmen Pereira. Now think about it when we talk about Carmen, maybe the name mean nothing to you, but think about it. She is the first African woman acting president, right, in 1984 in Guinea-Bissau, meaning we have a tendency to talk our, as uh, Sirley Johnson of uh, Liberia to be the first African woman president, right? We now think about it. I'm talking about Carmen Pereira, who was in 1984, the first as, acting president, who was acting president of Guinea-Bissau. Yes, she was acting president for a very short period of time, but she was in the president. Pre, uh, he was, she was the president, acting president of that time. You see, I was able to meet Carmen. I was able to meet uh, 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 Francisca Pereira, right? I was able to meet so many other women who participated in this struggle. Now, me meeting them at the beginning, it was difficult to have them get me uh, telling me why they were joining the war. Because at first they accepted to meet me because I was, they were asked by the PSJSA headquarters or leadership to meet me, right? But as I regularly go there and them knowing also I'm from Senegal and what I'm doing, what I'm interested, over time we developed some kind of like camaraderie and a kind of like friendship. And throughout those camaraderies and friendship also, I realized coming and directly asking these questions about what role they play in the war and what, what they did. Most of the time, they will always go back to give you this kind of like quote unquote official narrative. And the official narrative lay always around this uh, macro history in which is like, oh, we decided to liberate our country and we take the guns to fight the colonial system and so and so. Because the war has always been portrayed like that. Most of the time, these national liberation wars were portrayed like that. It's kind of like defining them through this nationalist independence ideology or defining them through this quote unquote Marxist paradigm ideology or defining them through this having a nationalist charismatic leader who came and was able to convince everybody to join the fight. But over time, moving away from these mega narratives and me just like discussing the, with them about what was their life or what life looked like in Giza Bissau during these colonial years, right? And the leading to the national liberation struggle that's when you start seeing them talking about how difficult life became with the colonial system, how they were forced now to spend more time in colonial farms or how they were expend, forced to expend more time in this cash crop farmings because they needed to, in order to pay colonial tax and so and so, how violent the colonial officers were, meaning it go back, their narrative go back to them women joining the fight more likely based on uh, how their daily activities, daily life were becoming so and so difficult, how feeding their families were becoming more and more difficult. And that's how it goes. And as I keep going there every year, every year, and always maintaining the contacts, it come to a point where they will always tell me these stories about when they were fighting and how happened. And also at the end, what you will see, they talk also about the struggle they have to face, right? Uh, when having to deal with their Bissau Guinean male fighters too. You see, that's why some social scientists, somebody like uh, Stephanie Urden arguing, the women of Guinea Bissau during this national liberation war, they were fighting against two colon uh, colon colonial system meaning the colonial system from the Portuguese colonization, but also this old African male ideology in, all, in, in which women should be staying behind, right? Or women should be a second class player, right? In the political sphere and so and so.
you see, they have to deal with all that. 